Welcome back to another episode of Math and Woodworking. Today we're going to be measuring trees. Yes, you got it, measuring trees. As I'm sure some of you guys have seen in your math books, uh, at some point in your life, trying to figure out the height of a tree, there's different ways to measure it uh, based on shadows and stuff like that, or estimations, angles, elevation, all sorts of things. Uh, today we're going to be measuring trees with proportions. So pretty much all you need is a person, yourself, uh, know what your height is with your shoes on if you're going to be outside and then some kind of tape measure if you've got a regular tape measure you can use it I've got one of these 300 foot tape measures because it's uh, it's movable you can move it around and there's all sorts of different things that you can do with it the regular tape measures sometimes they're a little bit too stiff and they kink and you get some problems the other thing you're going to need is a calculator um, any kind of calculator, you don't need a fancy um, trig calculator or anything like that. You should be good with just a standard four function calculator. Something to write with, something to write on. And that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and get going. All right, measuring a tree. First off, you got your tree, you got all sorts of branches and whatever up here. Please forgive my drawings. You've got your trunk, whatever that may look like. You've got the ground and then you go off from there. Okay, height of the tree. So here's that top point right, over, right here, whatever that is. And we're gonna try to figure out what that height is from the ground up. Uh, once again, I said you need a few things. You need a person, you need a shadow, tape measure, calculator, pencil, and uh, paper. And then we should be good. So height of the tree, if we're gonna have a shadow on that tree, let's just say it's gonna come down that way. Okay, you're gonna make whatever angle with the ground. We honestly don't care. We can find a different way uh, to solve it without knowing whatever these two angles are. Okay, trees, hopefully they're right angle, standing straight up in the sky. And then we've got our ground. So there's a few things that we're gonna do. One other item that you will need, or items, are going to be a couple of stakes to put in the ground, some kind of markers to be able to mark where that shadow comes in contact with the ground, and then also another marker for yourself. So what are some of the things that I did? Okay, we got the shadow going down, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw a marker down in the ground, whatever that is, a little flag, if you got it, piece of wood, we're gonna throw a marker wherever that is, but we gotta move a little quick, so that way that shadow doesn't move. Um, that's at the highest point of the tree, that last part of the shadow of the leaves that you see, go ahead and plant a marker there. Then what I did is I went ahead and moved over in between that marker and the tree, and I went ahead and stood up. I'm five feet, eight inches, roughly. Um, so there's, there's the top of my head right there. And I went ahead and stood straight up and down. And I positioned myself to where my head was in that same shadow, to where my head hit the bottom of that stake and where that meets the ground. So that way I can just use the same proportion, that same triangle right there. And then we'll move from there. So now that we've got our first marker here at the tip of the tree shadow, we're going to go ahead and plant another marker right here, wherever we're standing. Go ahead and throw it in between your ankles, and we've got another marker. Then my height, once again, I said I'm 5 feet 8 inches tall, so that translates. I'm just going to do that in terms of inches, so that way I've just got one number to work with and not feet and inches. So 5 feet 8 inches should be 68 inches. So that's that length from the top of my head down to the ground. So I've got 68 inches, once again, another right triangle right here. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that tape measure, measure all the way from that first stake that I put down at the end of the tree shadow, measure to me, whatever distance that is, and then measure all the way over to the tree and find out where it comes in contact with the middle of the trunk. And we'll just go up from there. The measurements that I came up with from the first stake at the tip of the tree shadow all the way to me, that distance was six feet nine inches. So six feet nine inches, six feet, uh, that should be 72 inches, plus nine inches, that gives us 81 inches. So there's 81 for just this little bitty chunk right there. Now, measuring that distance from that stake all the way across the tree, so we're gonna throw another little chunk down here. And that measurement between that stake and the tree got me 15 feet 7 inches, so that translates to 187 inches right there. So here's all our measurements that we've got. We're trying to figure out X, the height of the tree. Like I said before, we're going to be using proportions to figure out the height of that tree. So what I'm saying is proportions, my height to my shadow distance, my height divided by my shadow distance should be the same proportion as the tree height divided by the tree's shadow distance. So let's go ahead and set that up right now. So my height is 68 inches divided by 81 inches, my shadow length 
should equal the height of the tree, x, divided by the tree's shadow length, which is 187 inches. Once again, let's double check a couple things that we have the same pieces on top and the same pieces on bottom. We have height of me on top. We have the height of the tree on top as well. We got the tree shadow, or me shadow length on the bottom. We got the tree shadow length on the bottom. So shadow length on the bottom, height on the top, we're good to go, all right? Um, so now we can uh, figure out a couple ways to to solve for x right here. We can cross multiply. Um, some of you guys have done that before, so I'm gonna go ahead and set that up and then show you a little trick or thing that I figured out long, long ago that just kind of makes me um, do it a lot faster so that we don't have to set up the cross multiply and show my work because I never did that when I was a kid. Okay, so 68 times 187 should be equal to 81 times x. So 81 times x, let's go ahead and figure that guy out. Get your calculator, if you can punch it in, 68 times 187, that's 12,716. Let's move this over here. 12,716 should equal 81x. Now we're gonna divide by 81, divide by 81, and we get that x equals, let's divide by 81 in the calculator, and we get that x equals 156.987. I'm just going to go ahead and make that easy on myself, and I'm going to say 157 because that's, that is almost there. So 157 inches should be the height of the tree. So let's figure that out in feet. 157 divided by 12. That gives us 13.08. So there's 13 feet in there. I'm going to go ahead and slide this guy over. So that means x equals 13 feet. And I'm going to figure out how many inches that is. I already know, and you might know, but I'm going to subtract 13. And then since that's in terms of inches right here, I'm going to just multiply by 12, and then we get 1 inch. Okay, so 13 feet, 1 inch is the height of that first tree, which is that red oak. All right, now I told you guys that I was going to uh, give you guys a, a little trick, something to do your cross multiplication a little bit faster. Here's that, those proportions set up again, solving for x. Um, one of the things that I figured out based on all the operations that we have going down here, 68 times 187, and then we're dividing 181 later. Multiplication and division are what are called commutative meaning it doesn't matter in which order you do them. If you're still dividing by 81 and multiplying by 187, you can just go ahead and, and do them in whichever order. So what I figured out I could do is as long as I got my X in the top, doesn't matter if it's the left side or the right side, like if I had these, these fractions switched, as long as the X or the variable that I'm solving for is on the top, I'm just gonna go kind of around the horseshoe a little bit. So 68 divided by 81, and then I'm gonna multiply by 187 and I should get my number. So once again, we got that on the calculator, it was 156.987. That's what I should get for X. So I'm gonna do that right now. I'm gonna clear this out and I'm gonna hit 68 divided by 81 and then I'm just gonna go ahead and hit times 187. No parentheses needed because like I said, it is commutative. So 68 divided by 81 times 187 and then we should get that 156.9 something. And there it is. Okay, so um, for all of you students who don't like to show work, um, good job for you. You found an easier way. For all you teachers that don't like when your students don't show work, um, I'm sorry that I'm teaching bad habits, but maybe I'm lazy and maybe I'm efficient. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But there we go. 13 feet, 1 inch is the height of that tree. Now for the second piece of math that I'm going to be using for figuring out measurements of the tree. I wanted to figure out what the height of the tree was. Now I want to figure out what the diameter of the trunk is just to see how that's growing from year to year. So there are a couple ways that I did that. First off, I used some six inch calipers right here. This is just a digital caliper that I can use. I knew the trunks were pretty small so I could just go ahead and open it up and measure from there. But because I'm not sure if I would get the edges of the trunk or maybe the trunk might have been um, not uniform, like not a uniform circle. I went ahead and measured in a few places and then I took the average. So with that red oak tree, that first one, I got some measurements of 2.94 inches. I also got 2.87 inches and I also got 2.86 inches. 
Okay, so all pretty close in the ballpark. So what I wanted to do as well with that, now that I got those measurements and since the trunk is small, um, I can use the calipers and I'm gonna do that. So we've got 2.94, we're gonna add 2.87 and add 2.86. And that gives us that total of 8.67. Since we have three measurements there, I'm gonna divide by three. And I get an average of 2.89 inches. I'm gonna put AVG right here. And that is the diameter of the trunk. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that down, diameter. Okay, 2.89 inches. So that gave me a good, something good to work with. But another way that I wanted to just verify that the caliper measurements and the circumference were pretty close. Um, I went ahead and measured that circumference with a, an actual tape measure, uh, one of the fabric ones that's kind of soft that you can just wrap around anything. So when I measured the circumference, I got that the circumference was nine inches right on the money, okay? So circumference, um, there's a couple things to think about that. Circumference is pi times your diameter or two pi r. Okay, two times pi times your radius. Uh, I went ahead and did pi times your diameter because I want the diameter right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and go with that. So that means nine inches or nine should equal pi times my diameter. So if I divide by pi here, divide by pi, I should get that my diameter is, let's figure it out, nine divided by pi once again right over here and we get Two point, I'm just gonna to go to two digits, 2.86 inches. So there's my diameter based on the circumference measurement, and there's how it compares to the diameter of um, just an average of a few caliper measurements. So by 0 0.03 inches, that's really not bad. I wanna say um, 0 0.03 inches is one thirty second of an inch, roughly. So having a diameter measured two different ways that's only off by a 32nd of an inch, um, that is really not much at all. And if you're looking for a 32nd of an inch, 0 0.03 is just about that much. Good. Okay, so we got our diameter for the red oak and we got our height for the red oak, which once again was 13 feet and one inch. And there you go. So measured height, 13 feet, one inch and then measured diameter a couple different ways, right around 2.86 or 2.89 inches. Really stinking close, so we'll see how that progresses from year to year. One of the things that I wanted to do, since I had a way to check the caliper measurement of the diameter and the circumference, I had two ways to do that. I wanted to measure the height of the tree just to see how close the shadows and proportions and that math was to the actual or rough actual height of the tree. So I have an eight foot ladder, I'm really lucky to have that. And I took my tape measure, went ahead and put the stake in the ground, and climbed up the ladder and measured the height of the tree. So the height of that red oak that I just did math on was actually, and I'm going to say actually kind of in a rough term because I was on a slight slope and I wasn't able to reach all the way up at that high because it's pretty high even on an 8 foot ladder because uh, I can't stand on the top. Uh, the measurement I got from the tape measure was 12 feet 10 inches. So the measurement we did with math was 13 feet 1 inch, and I got roughly as high as I could reach 12 feet 10 inches. So a difference of 3 inches, that could have been my error with the tape measure not being able to reach up high enough. The shadows could have been off by just a little bit, I might not have had exactness for that little chunk. But still, 3 inches difference for the height of the tree, trying to measure it actually, and then using shadows and math. Uh, that's pretty good. So I'm going to keep using this method with shadows, I'm just going to try to pay close attention to the time of the day when I take that measurement because I got a slight grade in my lawn that kind of goes down just a little bit. So if I can get the trees in the morning to where it goes across the flat part, that would be good. Or maybe in the evening to where it goes across the back flat part, uh, we should be all right. But there's another little episode of math and woodworking, just some ways to actually find the measurement of a tree. And for me right now, it actually applies to my real world. So thank you guys for checking in and I'll find different ways to apply math in the shop and I'll post as many videos as I can. Thank you guys as always for watching and I'll catch up with you guys soon.